All right, guys, we need to talk about the keto flu. It seems like an old subject, but it's not because y'all keep having them. And I'm going to go over all the freaking things you wouldn't think of right now. All right, let's get into it, right? The keto flu. So basically, uh, my uh, tech guy, the Greek guy, has got a bunch of stuff on the screen, so I can't say anything. So while he gets prepared, because we're both running really a little bit behind, sorry for being a little late, uh, I'm gonna talk, I'm going to talk a little bit about electrolytes right now, but I'm gonna do a full live stream on it. But this is sort of like the pre-leader into that live next week. And, um, so basically we have um, one of the biggest problems with the keto flu is the balance of your electrolytes. I don't care what diet you're on, but this really hits low carb people and especially carnivore people even more so for the lack of potassium. So it's really, really important to find, uh, if you can find uh, real sources of food for potassium, it's always going to be better than the potassium chloride, number one, because that's pretty toxic, or even the better potassium, which is potassium citrate. But it's very, very important to understand that you have to balance all of these things. Sodium, potassium, chloride, bicarbonate, magnesium are all considered for your nerve, nerve endings, and for your muscle function, but in water balance. But now I can put this away and go into the keto flu. Um, those are my notes for the next, uh, live stream and I got a hair sticking out there. Okay, here we go. What's up everybody. Hey, Kevin. Thank you, Kevin. I'm trying and Deborah and, uh, I got my, my, my girl, Deborah in the house. Yes. All right. So whew, we got a woosah. Now people are still having the keto flu symptoms pretty much on any diet, but on keto or keto carnivore, it's especially high due to the fact of you guys not understanding what's going on with your current health. Now, this is a subject not typically mentioned. Um, what's up, Matthew? When I was on, you guys should go check out my inter interview on Bart K. I think we should like download it and uh, take just pieces of it so you guys can see that interview for those who haven't seen it on his channel. Uh, one of the things that I was talking about is the problem with the keto flu and all of these symptoms that people have stopped talking about. Now, the body, when you're trying to keto adapt, and it doesn't matter if you're on keto omnivore with plants or keto carnivore, uh, which is no plants, we're trying to, and some people are like, why keto with carnivore? I'm like, there is no carnivore without keto, okay? You have to do a high fat diet because if you don't do a high fat diet, you risk a lot of problems with your blood sugar and not keto adapting whatsoever, and this can lead to adrenal insufficiency. What's up everybody, Lori and everyone? So, um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the hat. Um, so here we go. Um, I want to go through the list, but not just yet. I just want to talk a little bit about what the keto flu actually means. So when you're, the flu is not like a flu. Now, initially when keto first came out and I started talking about keto years ago, um, yes, I'm 52. <laughs> She's really 52. I know I don't act like it, but I digress. Unless you try to mess with me like the guy I did today in the gym, but I just literally like <laughs> slapped him silly with my words and he was done. Okay. I, I, I demasculated him or emasculated. Okay. Here we go. So, uh, uh, basically it's not just flu symptoms. That's just a blanket word. It can be autoimmunity. It can feel like you're dying. It can be like your mood. It can be a reproductive hormonal system. It can be all of those things, which would be considered keto flu because people do things wrong. Now, 
Now, after doing this for many years, uh, for those who've just found me, y'all been on the internet a long time, way past uh, Thomas DeLauer, way past Dr. Berg, um, which I'm gonna talk about Dr. Berg in a minute because he contacted me and we became friends, okay? <laughs> we said, truce, we made friends, Dr. Berg and I. So, um, actually, he, um, he did not make friends with me. I, uh, what is it? I decided to be uh, um, good with him. Yeah, because he was good with me anyway. So he was cool with me, but I was not cool with him in the past. And um, I don't uh, sort of subscribe to a lot of his methodology, but I'm digressing. Here we go. But I, um, he, we, we good. Okay, we good now. Now, here we go. But even Dr. Berg and the Thomas DeLauers and, and all of these people who are talking Keto Connect and all these people, I was way, I was long, I was way before them. And, um, and I was talking about electrolytes and the importance of it because one of my clients, um, I was talking about the keto flu and one of my clients was so dehydrated, he had to, had to go to the hospital because his electrolyte balance was so low. That's considered a keto flu. But over the years, as I've worked with people, uh, I start to notice a lot of health issues coming from doing a diet like a ketogenic diet or carnivore diet. And what I learned from being in the round table talk with Bart K and I forgot the other two other guys, which are also newbies to the game, really lovely guys, but I'm sorry guys, you know, I'm, I'm an OG, you a new G and, and, and I'm a 4G so, or 5G. So with that said, in that talk with these guys, I realized the only thing that they talked about was ketones. I was like, ketones? I was like, who cares, bruh? If you got hypoglycemia, thyroid condition, blood sugar dysregulation, physiological insulin resistance rebound, uh, if, you're, if you're insulin resistant, if you have any of these health issues, you know, you, if you're like chronically gluconeogenic because you have adrenal issues, I don't care what your ketones are, bruh. It doesn't matter because you'll be losing them through your urine. So it, it made me just think about today's uh, talk about the keto flu, that it's no longer even something to be talked about, yet people are still having issues and people get off keto because now people are saying that it's dangerous over the long term, like Chris Kresser, who doesn't know what the frack he's talking about, and he talks that way about carnivore because he don't do it himself, okay? I feel like people who are critical of keto aren't just people who have done it, it's either people who did it wrong, but it's mainly people who don't have the discipline to do it right, okay? Gotta stick the hip out and be like this. Now, um, let's get into it. Uh, you love Dr. Berg. Um, well, yeah, but he came later into the game, and I think a lot of my criticisms were due to the fact that some of his recommendations are not really good with people who've got gut dysbiosis and nine cups of veggies and stuff like that aren't necessarily, like, I don't subscribe to that. And, um, you know, I'm not all about intermittent fasting. And we spoke actually on the phone and he was like, what's wrong with intermittent fasting? He actually said that. I was like, everything. Okay. <laughs> so, um, but he was very nice to me. He was very, very sweet and very nice. And he's like, what's wrong with intermittent fasting? And I was like, I don't agree with certain things. He's like, he was like, well, what do you not agree with? <laughs> I was like, pretty much a lot of stuff. But he's got good nuggets of information, which I've always said over the years. I just didn't subscribe to, you know, I like it when he, he did say, you know, I really research every day, which I respect, right? I respect that he was like, oh, I, you know, I do my research, which is, it's good to hear because I didn't see that prior. And I told him that I was talking crap about him before. I was like, you know, I've been talking crap about you. <laughs> okay. Anyway, um, but he was very nice to me. Very, very cool. And that's a whole nother conversation for another live stream. Not today. Here we go. Um, how do you get potassium on carnivore? Uh, you get it either through potassium citrate, which is a supplement, which I don't like, or just meat broth out of lean meat because there's potassium and liver, glandulars, boom, done, boom. That's mic drop, here we go. Uh, let me see, GNC told me keto is only me meant to be short term. GNC, that's, a <laughs> that is laughable. Idiots talking about something they know nothing about. I love when people start to criticize keto who don't know anything because I diminish them like this. I was like, so what were you gonna say? Nothing, that's what I thought. Learn more before you open your mouth because this keto there, this has a lot of 
metabolic and autoimmune benefits that people are suffering from, including keto omnivore and carnivore. It has a lot of therapeutic value. So when people are, you know, slamming it, it's because they can't do it. They don't have the discipline. Now, Yeah, um, it would be because Joe Rogan just don't got no black chicks on. He's got black comedians and, and some politically strange chick. <laughs> Joe Rogan needs a little bit of stuff on his show. Y'all go to his show and be like, you got to get on or his Instagram. That's what he looks at. You got to get stuff on your show. But I don't want to be all thirsty. If I get on, I get on. If I don't, I don't. But it, it would be a good platform. Now, um, you gave up coffee weeks ago and taking ancestral, by, uh, ancestral supplements. Where's the graphic? Where's the... Child, you were behind. He was supposed to be ready. I'm just saying. Um, ancestral supplements, I'm hoping this helps heal my body. I'm not ready. Huh? And I'm not ready. There's no graphics. Where are they? <sighs> he can't stand criticism. He, he, he got that man ego. But uh, I love him anyway, right? <laughs> He's like giving me like the, the nod, like, shut up. All right. Yes, Deborah says to book a consultation, go to stephanieperson.com. But before I sell you another car, let's get more into this uh, keto flu stuff. And I need to take a drink of water because this has a lot to do with the keto flu. Dehydration. You got that list? Yes, of course. Okay, let's get it going. Yes, because I'm He's on always the- prepared. Hi, guys. Right. I'm the good guy. That's why when we do so, videos, they never work and we hmm. get echo. Okay, so um, <laughs> that's the great guy. Oh, there he is. That's yeah. the great guy. We don't have a connect. Anyway. Somebody said in the, the one of our videos, I think you guys have a relationship brewing. I was like, shut up, bro. He's got a freaking lovely wife. Now, here we go. Kidney stones are not created by keto. If you have kidney stones, yes, I can tell you how to get rid of them. But hold on a second. Get off the oxalates, right? Get off the, all the all the plants and all the spinach and all of the freaking dark chocolate and all of the different vegetables that are high in oxalates and sweet potato potato and that'll be a start to get rid of your oxalate rich foods now see how prepared he is Mm -hmm. see how prepared you don't see all the listing so why don't we uh everything you need everything yeah that's what i said in the whatsapp message So you had to you you had to use your genius magic ma- uh, magic to be able to put the text on the uh, screen. Yeah, story. I made uh, seven six pictures, each with because uh, I need to have uh, big enough. Why for don't the we make this the read. background so I can go into it? Okay. Okay. Well, mm, yeah. All right. Uh, what symptoms do you have if you have kid- kidney stones? Now that's one of the things on the list, and that is. Uh, so I can move here. When you have kidney stones, there you go. That's good. Nice. Yes. Fabulous. Because we it's transparent. So then the wood's still in the background. All right. So the first, I'm going to go through these lists, right? I made a huge list. Um, now, the low energy is the most obvious symptom. Now, I'm going to go and explain this list. And it's a massive list. That's why he's getting annoyed with me because the list is so long, it's hard to put it all on a screen uh-huh. so you guys can see it. Let me show you. Yes, y'all, I wrote this this morning yeah. in, in, in uh, preparation for this live stream. See, because I do my homework before. Not that I do my homework, I was prepared. This all came from my head. Now, I've coached over 3,000 people over the years. And so these newbie people, they, they can't give you this list because they don't know. Right? These These... Keto professionals, they couldn't give you this list, but I'm going to give it to you right now. Here we go. Let me get out of my black voice and into my Kim Kardashian voice. So fabulous. Now, number one, see that right there? That's like, okay. So we have low energy. And the reason why you guys have low energy is because your body is not actually using ketones yet. Your body has to develop the enzymes to break things down in the liver to be able to convert the fat from your body or for, no, actually the fat from what you eat into an ac- uh, acetoacetate so it can get into the bloodstream and be used in the Krebs cycle and get past, past the blood brain bar- barrier. And that's a process. If you have low liver function, it's going to be more difficult if you have stress, if you have, like, if you're trying to rush things and eat almond flour 
and like intermittent fast and do fasted cardio, you're going to experience, experience low en energy. And the reason that that is, is because your body doesn't even know how to convert ketones or viable ketones because we can make ketones, but then now your body has to learn how to use them within the Krebs cycle. And that's very difficult. And that's the reason why you can see often in a blood glucometer test, ketones are when people waste their ketones via the urine strip, but they don't feel anything because the cells aren't uptaking in through, uh, via the receptor site. Okay, so um, low energy is the most common one because you're not using any any uh, uh, ketones, really. You use a little bit, not really. And another problem is that you probably came into doing the ketogenic diet with low energy anyway. So you probably had adrenal insufficiency or thyroid problems before you even start, or even low, low testosterone, before you even started trying to do keto, and then you do it the wrong way. And so how the wrong way is clearly from eating too much protein, it's from not eating enough animal fat, eating enough fat in general, eating things like cheese, which has casein in it, which is very inflammatory to the gut lining, eating nuts as your source of fats, which are high in omega-6, which don't produce crap for ketones. And people will be like, what? I have two tablespoons of butter all day long and a bag of friggin' almonds. I'm like, yeah, that's really smart. That's how you're gonna get friggin' kidney stones. Now, um, so there's many, many reasons for low energy. And when people's questions come in, we can go more into it. Uh, let's see here. Um, now we have the headaches. The headaches is typically, typically due to the fact that you've dropped your um, carbohydrates out. So carbohydrate, I've said this, said this a million times, that the cells in your body hold on to water. When you eat carbs, carbohydrate, and when within the cells you're holding your electrolytes, especially the main ones, magnesium, potassium, sodium, you drop a lot of those three minerals and then boom comes the headache. So it's very, very important that you get on top of your uh, electrolyte minerals for especially on low carb diets, which is sodium, potassium, magnesium. And I'll go more into that in a second. Poor sleep, that happens when people do keto because people use carbs to fall asleep. You eat a bunch of carbs at night, blood sugar shoots really high, and then it drops, which is hypoglycemia, and that's what puts people to sleep. That's why people drink wine at night or when they eat a lot of carby foods at night and they get sleepy, right? Low blood sugar, and that's why people start to develop sleep problems, which is considered one of the lists of issues on um, uh, the, the, is that, by the way, after Deborah there? Okay, the comments are still coming. I just want to make sure it still works. What is the best food for the prostate? Um, I don't think it's a food. I think it's a lifestyle. So I would say that probably, I don't know if you have any gut issues, Raymond, but it's either keto omnivore or keto carnivore. That's, that's the best in the, the, in the stuff approved safe list of foods, which I should do another stream and show you the list of approved foods so people can stop asking me on my DM on Instagram which is definitely ketogenic. Uh, yeah, stop drinking green tea for sure. Super oxalate if you don't want kiss, kid, kidney crystals and uh, oxalates in your eyes and in your joints and in your urethra and in your vulva and all this kind of stuff. Now, muscle ache. Muscle ache also comes from an adrenal response because you guys tend to be gluconeogenic, which is the breakdown of amino acids in the absence of ketones and enough glucose or stored glycogen. And so your immune system becomes instantly compromised when you're not adapting. And unfortunately, people go through extreme issues with other adaptation or it's easier, but everybody's gonna go through a little bit of something when you're still trying to produce those ketones. Now, um, Bones can also ache. Now the nausea is can be for a couple of reasons. Nausea can be from ad your adrenals trying to take over where there's no stored glycogen. So you could be like, oh, I feel nauseated because you are not eating carbs anymore. That means depleted glycogen storage is not enough keto ketones. And so the adrenal glands will pump out bolus amounts of adrenaline, norepinephrine, and then you feel nauseated. So the other part of nausea, see nobody talks about this stuff. Everybody needs to share this friggin' video because this is the ultimate list that all these channels don't talk about, right? They just list a couple things like, you know, a couple, but not all of them. Now, um, nausea can also come from the gallbladder. Um, five to 10 grams of sodium needed per day. Yeah, if you don't have high blood pressure, which some people do. Yeah, because it increases the volume of water and the arteries. And when people have weak arterial walls, it's a problem. So they have to be very careful with 
their sodium intake, how they take it in, with what food they take it with, and blah, blah, blah. Now, uh, nausea is coming from either gallbladder sludge because the gallbladder is holding on to bile salts that are released into the small intestine to break down fat into tiny little molecules so they can get into the bloodstream and you can use them as ketones or use them for their fat soluble vitamins or any health properties for the brain and the cholesterol molecules for, for any, any type of part of the body that uses fat like the lungs and the, in, the lining of all cells in the brain and, ball and, and your reproductive hormones. Um, so we need a gallbladder for that and to, to digest your vitamin D, E, A, and K because people who've got gallbladder issues, they don't get their, their fat soluble vitamins in very well and you start to see it in their total health. They don't look healthy because the body doesn't have the equipment to, to fix the car, the tools. Now we've got moodiness and depression. Now in the very beginning when I first started coaching people, I was like, dang, you know, some people are getting really depressed. That's the reason why I started up and up and up, up, upping the fat, the, the animal fat was because it seemed like depression went down when I got butter, tallow or lard up. That was really, 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 really amazing to witness. Now, a lot of people ask about, uh, uh, fat, uh, fowl, bird fat, um, goose or now that's more higher in omega six, not by a lot. I think it's something like 18% which is enough, but it, but it is high in K2. So that's the trade-off people who need K2 now, but, but uh, bird fat is not one of my main fats. It's going to either be from like bison or lamb, or it's going to be more for, from the mammals and not like you can't get enough fat from fish. It's just not enough. Now, uh, let's see here. Muscle aches. Did I already write muscle aches? Yeah, I did. Oops. Twice. Oops. Okay. Uh, dehydration is like what I said before, you drop out the carbs, the kidneys just dump water and you start peeing a lot when you first do keto and you can continue to pee a lot if your blood sugar runs high or if you guys start to refeed back onto carbs with this targeted or cyclic ketogenic diet, garbage nonsense that people lie to you about, which is now why people are like, keto doesn't work and it harms you. You can't do it for the long term stupidity. I wish those people would say women can't do keto for the long term. Well, I'm 52 and I've been doing it for 12 years since I was 40. Now what you gonna say? What? Now what? <laughs> I'm in a good mood, but I'm feisty today. Here we go. Um, so dehydration is a big one from too quick of water loss or not being able to. Are you over drinkers of water? Yes, you can dehydrate yourself drinking like a gallon of water a day in your cells. So your cells lose their ability to absorb water and you're like, and then you're dumping water. It's a mess. It's a cluster frack of a mess. Now, um, peeing more often again is associated with the dehydration and that's because you are losing the water via the kidneys, uh, because of, of the lack of taking in a starch or sugar. Thirsty is another part of the whole peeing and, and dehydration. Um, brain fog. Now brain fog, this happens to a lot of people because they tend to become hypoglycemic on keto when they're not adapted. What you guys have to understand, you can go ahead and eat keto foods. You're not adapted. People are like, I'm in ketosis. I'm like, you're not in ketosis. This is, you're tripping. It takes a lot more work. Nothing's going to come for those who, who are not willing to, to do what it takes to get you where you need to go in your total optimal health. And that means being like as humanly perfect as possible. I said humanly, not like, not idealistically, uh, or fantasy. I meant, um, also cortisol watch the poor waking gluconeogenesis with fasting on zero carbs. Yes. Uh, yeah, fasting. I'll go into that, but not this very second. Now here we go. Um, so moodiness comes from a couple of issues, which is, you know, your adrenals, you're like, you don't have energy right? You don't have energy. This is going to affect homeostasis. This is going to affect your neurochemistry, your it, it, hypothalamus pituitary adrenal access people. Depression comes on very, very, very quickly when you don't have enough glycogen storages or enough ketone production. Now let's see here. Dehydration, peeing a lot, thirsty, brain fog. Now dizziness. Dizziness comes from some people don't get enough sodium into their diet. This can come from low blood pressure. If you guys are have like, um, are uh, inclined to have low blood sugar, but you don't know it because I mean low blood pressure. So speaking of low blood sugar, so low blood sugar and, and low blood pressure will create dizziness on keto, FYI, right? So you have to get enough sodium. You have to, you might even need to sprinkle a little bit in a, in a glass of water for those who are showing uh, low blood pressure signs on keto. And of course with hypoglycemics 
and adrenal insufficient people will ex exhibit a dizziness sy symptoms. So these are things you need to look for when doing this dietary measure. Now, you know, how you would combat these things I'll talk about because it's very easy. Low energy means like don't refeed, like get, eat your fat throughout the day, right? Unfortunately, you're going to have to eat more often in the beginning just to stabilize that adrenal, that, that whole conversation between the hypothalamus and the adrenal conversation, because if your glycogen is depleted and the, and the, the, the medulla, the, the middle of the brain, hypothalamus pituitary, it can sense what's coming into the bloodstream. So this adrenal response is not as high. That's the reason why you have to eat more often to stabilize your blood sugar. And sometimes you have to add a little fatty meat and I'm talking fast because we got a lot to go through. A little bit of fatty meat and I'll get, hey, see Siren, do you need what's up, girl? I want to have to talk with you. We got to talk because one thing that I want to talk about, see Siren Janine, she's like, a lot of things are about iron deficiency. Uh, see Siren Janine, a lot of things are about uh, undiagnosed thyroid will create that, those symptoms you're talking about. But I'll talk about that later because you can get a full thyroid panel or you can get a TSH and uh, come back normal. And then you're like, oh, it's because of iron, but it's all, it's really a, the main symptoms of hair loss, I would say is more due to thyroid. And then there's the whole heme iron thing, which she's, y'all got to go to see Siren Janine's channel. Where is she over there in the chat somewhere? Um, and go talk like she's awesome. She's doing great, great work. So go check out her channel, subscribe, hit the bell, all that stuff. Now, uh, we get down the list. So, um, now poor sleep. And now this is due to, uh, like I said, so what you guys need to do is eat your fat again throughout the day, like three main meals, two snacks, get the fats high. So see Siren Janine, I know you're doing carnivore. You got to make sure it's keto carnivore or are you going to have some problems? I got even my keto flu. I'm totally fine now. Okay, good. Um, let's see here. <laughs> Poor sleep. So when you get that blood sugar stable, now, you can also diaphragmatic breathe, you use blue light blocking glasses, anything that's going to keep the adrenals from reaction, reacting, because if we can get the adrenals from stop, stop pumping out cortisol, you'll be able to sleep better now because uh, cortisol is going to blunt the ability to produce enough melatonin now because you start to develop a serotonin deficiency when the cortisol is too high. Now, gallbladder, that simple. You're going to do that easily with using ox bile salts. Start under the recommended dose. Take it 10 minutes uh, after you've started eating something. And the reason why I say take small amounts first under the recommended dose is because people start to get, it's like salty. It gives people heartburn. It makes them feel like crap. So the way to combat that is to slowly start to work your way up to the dosage on the box or the, the bottle that you, and this is from uh, bovine cow. It's the bile salts from that. You take it in, it'll help you uh, um, break down. So you're taking it orally. It has to hit the stomach and then hit the gallbladder and then hit the small intestine. That's why the reason why you start eating it first, uh, food, and then you take the ox bile until your body gets used to it. And then you can just start taking it, uh, prior to, to anything fatty, really rich and fatty that you're taking. So the gallbladder symptoms are going to be, um, it's going to be pain on the right side. And I'll go more into that later because I have a gallbladder section. Nausea, again, can be adrenal insufficiency there from not having, using ketones and also having your blood sugar, uh, like just slam up, down, up, like up, then down, then up, then down. That will create nausea due to the cortisol release because when your cortisol is being released into the fight or flight, yes, 30 carbs per day. Oh, 30 carbs. What kind of carbs are you eating, by the way? I'm kind of curious. Um, so you're not doing, uh, you're not doing carnivore. Okay. Or are you? I'm not sure. Uh, cause you can't get that 30 carbs from vegetables or plant source foods. Now the moodiness and depression is going to get healed by everything I just exp expressed by Matt balancing eating throughout the day. That'll help a lot with keeping the adrenals quiet. Bones aching, muscle aches, all those things will come from eating throughout the day. Um, I definitely suggest thinking about a consultation because I can put all this crap together for you, really break it down to your lifestyle and your individual health issues and so forth. Now we're going to go on to the dehydration. Like I said, you want to get in the magnesium glycinate. Um, if you can't tolerate, because if everybody's got sensitivities, so to the glycinate or malate, if you're having constipation, I'll go more into that because it's another sy symptoms symptom. You can take magnesium, magnesium citrate. Um, get at least two water liters of water a day and don't drink all the, the water at once, especially ketotic people, because you'll be dehydrated. You have to sip it throughout the day because it takes 45 minutes for that stuff to hit the cells. And if you're gushing it, then the later in the day, you're going to be dehydrated. That's the reason why we sip throughout the day. Raw milk, two cups. 
Oh, yeah. So, unfortunately, Seaside and Janine, you cannot be ketotic on two cups of raw milk. I would, I would go and do kefir instead with less carbs. It's I think it's 10 to 13 grams of carbs per cup. So, one thing that people have to understand, it doesn't matter if it's from milk or from ketchup or from anything that's considered a low carb. The, the, because it's a liquid, it can hit your bloodstream too quickly. So that 30 grams, is, is you'll never be able to keto adapt on two cups of raw milk. It just You just can't. So I think that doing raw kefir is probably your best bet over the milk if you actually want to produce ketones because uh, sea siren, like maybe not just iron is your problem, but also your, adre- I mean, your thyroid problem. I'm feeling, uh, I can't remember sea siren, Janine. Janine, I think that's the reason why she and I need to talk on the phone. I think that um, a lot of your problems, Janine, is your thyroid. And you could go to the doctor and they'll be like, oh, your, your labs are fine, but they're not. So there's three things to reason why, because she, she talks a lot about being a vegan and having low iron and how the hair falls out. And because I've watched her videos, like one daughter has like great hair and the other one and all her kids, her daughters are or iron deficient. So you got to think about the gut wall because when the gut wall is strong, you can absorb that iron better. So I want you to do more videos about that, strengthening the gut wall so your body can absorb more iron. Yes, some heme, heme iron if you choose to eat uh, um, red meat because you're not going to get that from chicken. I know that because he said, just talked about it. Uh, let's see here. Well, I already know that, but like, you know, she good, she good. Now, the peeing a lot, get the electrolytes in, thirsty electrolytes. Brain fog is coming from uh, not adapting, so low glucose. So again, eating throughout the day, going through to bed earlier. Don't start like doing, you know, your freaking Muay Thai class at night because that'll keep going with the, the brain fog because blood glucose too high, ketones at the bottom of the table, no glycogen, brain fog. Uh, could we also be from a candida die-off, which can create, so you have those, these uh, albicans spore, albicin spores dying off. Let me see, I don't think I'm in ketosis, not sure I want to do keto, yes. So if you're having issues with your hair, you can't just do two cups of raw milk and not enough fat. It will damage your hormonal system. And that's, uh, Janine, what a lot of these carnivore people don't talk about. And guess what, Janine? Mostly they're men. Okay. Men who don't, are not menstruating, men who uh, don't have the estrogen dominance that affects the thyroid. So you don't hear this because they don't talk about it. That's why we're here on this channel. Okay. Now, here we go. Let's go through the next list. See, I did a targeted ketogenic diet has a point, but not a huge carb. What? What is that? I cannot read that. Carb loads. Okay. Only about extra 25 grams show for special occasions for keeping the cortisol low. No, I'm sorry, Stefan. All that that you just said is nonsense. And you've been learning this from other people telling you nonsense. You really want to know what's going on with your ketone production and glucose and your energy levels. Write down your symptoms. And I don't mean just how you feel. You got to write down everything, what your poop looks like, if you fart, how your posture is, how you sleep, if you dream. Like there's all these details where people think like, oh, I'm so good. No, you're not good. You're not good. <laughs> me see, not to be rude. I'm not trying to call stuff on out. Let um, me see, says 25 or slow carbs. Slow carbs? No, there's no slow carbs. Just forget that term, slow carbs. Keto, I did this round table talk. And this dude, Jack, was eating sugar. I eat sugar every day, but I'm a keto coach. I'm like, am I on planet Zar? Like, what are you talking about? And I am not attacking people, you know, how they live their everyday lives. But that's the dumbest thing I ever heard of. And I really wanted to say dumb on that roundtable talk, but I didn't want to be rude to the guy. I was like, what dumb ideology have you come up with that, you know, sugar is okay? And he's a lovely guy. Jack, you're lovely. But what you said was dumb. Okay, uh, <laughs> oh damn. I hate, yes, I hate when uh, men give me diet advice. But like most of them are online. Janine, like it's mostly men. And what I learned is they don't know. They don't think about this stuff. They don't, they don't talk about this. No, no they don't. So I sat in the round table talk. Y'all, y'all are three men and I'm one woman. Yo, let me set the table, let me set this right. Because I'm the one who's in the better shape than all of you. I didn't say it, I thought it. Okay, let me see here. I'm finally caught you live. Thank you, Tammy. 
No, there's no slow, slow carbs. Forget that. Forget it. Not for keto. If you're doing a low carb diet, sure. Carbohydrates, sure. But keto is once there's glucose. You know what a slow carb is? There's only one, there's only maybe two types of slow carbs, okay? Let me tell you what those two foods are. Oh, wait, who can guess what a real, a truly ketotic, slow burning carb food is? And I'll wait for the answer and I'll give it to you guys in a second. Because there's one in particular that's high in carb that's slow burning. Because what, what his consideration of slow burning carbs is absolute nonsense. He learned that from some other idiots telling you the wrong information. And I, I'm sounding this way because I've coached people over the years and I don't want to hurt people. Nobody else says that. Everybody believes that what they say is so right. They don't they talk about, I don't want to hurt people. No, they don't say that. Can't make money if you say that. I'm going to hurt you. I'm going to hurt you guys by telling you whatever you want to hear. Iron, the, the iron overload. What's up with that friggin' ring light? Um, the iron overload is t- typically for men who have hemochromatosis. It's very unusual for women to develop these, these symptoms of an iron overload. And um, it's typically from eating foods rich in iron, heme iron, and the body can't get it into the cells. And that's a whole nother frack of a gut mess. Let me see. Yes, Deborah, Deborah, yo, t Roz. yes, avocado. And I know that other dude, I can't remember his name, did not think he's thinking about slow burning carbs. And let me tell you why an avocado is a slow burning carb. There are 13 grams of carbs, and this is good for Janine too. There are 13 grams of carbs in an avocado, 10 to 13, and there's around 10 to 13 grams of carbs uh, in a hot avocado and 10 to 13 grams of carbs in a cup of raw milk. But see, milk is liquid. You don't have to digest it. They just go right, right, whoo, five minutes, boop, an avocado, whoo, tick, 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 tick. It's got to get through the fiber, right? The stomach has to break down the fiber and all that fat. So it drips very slowly into the bloodstream, so slow that the blood sugar never spikes high, spikes high enough to block your keto adaptation. That's why avocado is considered a freaking amazing slow burning carb. Uh, let's see here. I, and, and you guys, I'm in a hyper silly mood, so I'm not trying to call out or be rude to anybody. Please, everybody take my, my sense of humor. I'm not trying to hurt anybody. All I see is like mostly thumbnails with no picture. So it's nothing personal. Uh, let me see. I showed my father your introduction and he had a hard time believing me when I told him that you were 52. Oh, thank you. Yes, I'm almost 53, right? So as you get older, that's a whole nother subject about learning things like I learned handstands and handstand pushups against no wall and then crank out the full extension pull-ups, boom. Guys don't still like to do pull-ups next to me because they don't do them full, you know, full extension. They do them half-cocked. Uh, wide grip half-cocked carbs with high fiber, I suppose. Yes, but that's not slow burning for a ketotic person. It's just too many carbs. Even milk, which might be whole full fat milk, has too many. It's just not enough fat to slow down the, the, uh, the digestion process of the amount of carbohydrates that are going to hit the volume. And the, and the speed of it going into the bloodstream. Let me see, will keto, let me see, carbs, high fiber. Will keto adapt while consuming seven grams of carbs from, be- oh no, yep, can't. It doesn't matter if it's beetroot or if it's two carbs in one tablespoon. That, if it's in a liquid form, that's gonna go right into your bloodstream and you'll watch people's ketones or their blood sugar not relax. And there's this couple, I'm on to my second consultation for, with them. They live in China. And I was like, okay. And the guy's like, dang, Steph, you're right. Because he wants continued coaching. And I'm like, and he's like, you're right. He's like, my blood sugar is doing this. My wife's blood sugar is doing that. And I need to make these changes that I suggested. But anyway, so we've got constipation. So constipation comes from the drop of magnesium. Now, this is very interesting. A lot of people develop constipation on keto because when they're dropping a lot of magnesium, we don't get it from food, really. You have to take supplemental. So if you don't take supplemental magnesium glycinate, which most people don't, then you do keto and there's not enough water in the cell because of not being bloated enough, 
you become constipated and people don't understand like why am I constipated I'm like go get magnesium citrate and glycinate right now boom all right and drink more water see loose stool now this can come on keto or keto carnivore from eating the foods that you see that people say to eat online okay so if you have leaky gut and you start eating mono foods like almond flour and cauliflower rice and your body's reacting it to it that gut wall that's not strong so the gut wall it should be tight these junctions these zonulins and then they open up and boom you get loose stool because you start eating foods that you normally wouldn't eat in high amounts like a bunch of nuts or a bunch of cheese or almond milk or none of this garbage or even dairy products in your body is sensitive you have a histamine response you'll get loose stool now the other thing is from uh, which is leaky gut so that's the connection uh, and oh people on carnivore they still don't know why people are getting loose stool now this guy Elliot I forget his name he said it was because of release of bile I don't think so I don't think it's because of a release of bile there's something to do with with uh, the carbohydrates being gone or the fiber being gone and um, I don't know if people are getting loose stool if they're eating now I got loose stool when I ate raw meat so I ate raw meat for about a month or maybe two months now that's what gave me loose, loose stool. But me just going from keto to carnivore, keto carnivore, I never got loose stool just because I switched to meat. So something's going on uh, with, I, I don't think it's bile. Because a lot of people, where where is it? Loose stool. I don't think a lot of people are upping their fats. So I don't think it's excess bile. That's my theory. Now, floating stool, that's the leaky gut. Loose stool, floating stool, leaky gut. Or it's the gallbladder, right? Because if you're not using, if you're not, if the bile salts aren't being scrubbing down the fat and your body's not using fat, all that excess fat that you're eating, it ends up in the toilet. Um, uh, which also could be, uh, uh, could it be to the, to the, mm -hmm. well, if you're having gallbladder issues and you're having bile salts that are not, maybe that's what he meant. You're not having bile salts that are being utilized. So maybe that's what's creating the stool. I don't know if there's a gallbladder problem, but then everybody has it. So I don't think it's that. Sorry. I'm just thinking out loud. I get loose stool from high fat. Now, uh, from high fat, that sounds like your gallbladder. Or if you're doing butter and you have a sensitivity to butter, that's a histamine response, which can also make your stool lose. Uh, let's see, leaky gut or gallbladder, I already mentioned that. Food, uh, food in your stool. So typically food in your stool is leaky gut, histamine response. If you see food in your stool, take that food out, please. Just take it out. It's creating a histamine reaction. Increase of bloating and gassing. So the increase of bloating is a couple things. It's, it's leaky gut, histamine response. It can be a spike in your candida when people start to eat a bunch of cheese and nuts. It can also can be from uh, the gallbladder, mainly the gallbladder. Did you do gall bloating, gallbladder? But it can also be from, it's actually 50-50, I think. The bloating and gassy goes together. Here we go. Lower back pain. Now, kidney problem, right? You guys can have kidney crystals. Who's getting ultrasounds of their kidneys? Mm, nobody. Like, unless you already have the pain there. You could have a pre-existing issue from oxalates of kidney stones or the precondition to stones, the precursor, which is the, the uh, crystals. And then you go and pound the meat down, right? Because people are eating like three ribeyes. Some people are You're eating a lot of meat. You can't break it down. Kidneys are overworked and you start to have pain. Um, kid, uh, eating a ketogenic diet is moderate to low protein, so you shouldn't have any kidney issues. Now, I've had people do carnivore who've got like, like brown pee. So they're having kidney problems. So it's not the meat that gives you the kidney problems, but you could have a pre-existing kidney issue. Never even know it because you don't present the symptoms. Same thing with the gallbladder because you're not going to know you have a gallbladder problem until you up your fat. You should be able to take any fat with no problem. You should have any kidney issues until people start doing way too much protein and eating mostly protein on a keto carnivore or they're doing just carnivore. Let's keep it real. Um, the light here is making me too dark. Mr. Greek guy. So I'm just stepping up a little bit. I'm stepping to the side. Okay, that's the problem. Here we go. Now, um, people with kidney issues on a ketogenic diet that's high in fat should have no problem. In fact, it, should, it can, it can uh, relieve their kidney issues. Now, people with uric acid and, and um, purine problems from red meat, you need to address 
your kidney function in total. The taking magnesium citrate, taking citrus to break down any issues, any type of for beginning forming of crystals in those kidneys. People with kidney disease who've already have damage to their kidneys, moderate to low protein and a ton of fat should begin to give those kidneys a break without having to eat a lot of carbs, which keeps the kidney disease going because of advanced glycation end product, otherwise known as ages, which is, you know, sugar irritating the cell lining. Body has a harder time to heal under eating a lot of sugar. Uh, so lower back pain, and it's like here, right? It's right there on lower than the right, the edge of the, the not the edge, yeah, the rib cage, a little higher, right? Right there. That's where the kidneys are, right there. Now, um, dry eyes, dandruff. Okay, so redness, redness, redness of the skin. Um, now, redness of the skin can be a candida die-off or it can be a histamine response. If you're getting like blotchy redness because you're eating mono food, you're eating foods you normally wouldn't do on your standard American diet, rotate your food or get off of it. Do an experiment. Eat one food all day long. Like people are like, oh, I heard the avocado. So they start eating avocados and they start getting blotchy red skin, which they never had before because they would never eat a whole avocado. They have a little tablespoon or a couple tablespoons of guacamole with some chips. And they didn't notice the issue until they started eating daily avocados, um, which some people have a histamine response. Not all. It depends on the strength of your gut wall. Now we've got, uh, now I'm going to go through everybody's questions. That's why I'm talking so fast because I want to get through a lot of these great questions coming in. Um, now, uh, the dandruff, that's typically from a candida die-off or histamine, but mainly it's candida. So dandruff is fungal infection of the scalp, uh, which a lot of you guys won't notice those symptoms until you stop eating carbs. And then all of a sudden, all of the, the candida albicans, all those spores that were proliferating in the bloodstream and on going all over, they just start dying off because there's no sugar to feed on. And all of a sudden, you start dandruff and itching and the skin gets fracked up. Dry eyes. Now, this is typically due to um, our dryness or dry eyes. Now, this can be thyroid, but mainly what I see on ketogenic people is a mucin or mucin deficiency, which get on that liver for the vitamin A to help with all that dryness. Like, ooh, my eyes are dry. Now, this happened to me when I first did keto. I'd be like riding my bike to the gym and they'd be like watering and they felt dry. But yes, once I started getting my macros on point, that went away. Blood sugar and hypoglycemia. So this is a big one. I'm going through a lot because it's a big list. Hypoglycemia, sugar. Now, the Greek guy is doing uh, uh, keto now. It's, how many weeks are you into it? I am uh, one month and one month. Yeah. Now, so far on this list, have you experienced any of these details? Mm, yeah. Not lower back pain, not skin reactions, blood sugar, yeah, and tired. Tired. But there's the first so list. That yeah. was the main list. The first mm -hmm. list I gave. Yeah. These get more into the more hardcore. Let me get. Okay. So low energy sometimes, headache no, poor sleep, mm. and yes or no. Like I sleep okay. Uh, muscle aches no. Nausea, yes, sometimes. Uh, moody, depression, uh, depression, no. Moody, yeah. I'm always moody. I He's can't keep moody. calm, I'm Greek. I can get him pissed <laughs> off at me in like two seconds just by making fun of the lights in here. Go ahead. Really? You're going there now. <laughs> uh, bones aching, no. Muscle aches, no. Dehydration, yes. Thirsty, I'm feeling thirsty. Peeing more often, not so much. Brain fog when I'm smoking. <laughs> and uh, dizziness, no. no. Okay. When I'm okay. Yeah. Parakolo. How do you say thank you in Greek? I forgot. Ευχαριστώ. Ευχαristo. That's right. Ευχαristo. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that. I just gotta remember. Okay, here we go. Um, lower back pain, blood sugar, hypoglycemia. So, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, people develop hypoglycemia because they don't know, how, their body doesn't know how to use ketones. And all this garbage crap online where they tell you you can adapt in like, you know, two weeks or six weeks is a lie. Because we've lived our whole lives eating carbs. So, to take them away and all of a sudden you're adapted and fabulous. Why am I turning dark? Okay. Mm. Okay. Can you please stand in your normal position? I can't because look. Please I... go, go, okay, go well, over there. Okay, move the text. Shit. No, I'm Shit. not moving the text. What? 
I'm blocking the text. I'm going to move you. Okay. Now, um... Looks good now, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm wearing a cap, guys, because my forehead's red, because I'm doing a peel to get rid of the melasma on my forehead. So I had melasma all here. Bye-bye. Now the forehead's left to go, so I'll be wearing caps quite uh, a lot until it's gone. Uh, let's see here. Mm -mm. We were talking about hypoglycemia. Yes, hypoglycemia, tired. So basically, people are like intermittent fasting, which is just anorexia. Let's let's call it what it is. It's anorexia. I mean, people don't do it for autophagy. You can't measure it. Nobody knows if you actually achieve it. So when you say I'm on a weight loss diet, everybody's like, oh my God, that's so bad. Like love yourself and love your body. But then if you put a title on it, like intermittent fasting autophagy, then everybody runs around not eating and it's fracking people up. Every That's one thing we all agreed. Hey Jack, I love you. We agreed on the intermittent fasting. <laughs> but we all like, uh, people are having issues because if you're not adapted, right? You're not keto adapted, body doesn't know how to use ketones and your glycogen storages are low. This is what I love to debate with the intermittent fasting people. Now what? But Dr. Fungus said that, and I'm, I know I'm being silly, guys take my humor because I don't want to say people's names because I don't need to call out, call out them like with their direct names. Dr. Fungus said that, you know, it was good for you. And that's all people say. Like, I'm like, okay, what have you got? Hypoglycemia. Is it good for hypoglycemics? Is it good for thyroid people? Is it good for people who got blood sugar dysregulation? It's good for obese people who got high insulin. Well, guess what? That's why therapeutic ketogenic or keto carnivore is, will do that without food deprivation. Hello? Where, where are we? Where are we going in 2020? I'm scared. Okay, here we go. Now, hypoglycemia. A lot of you guys uh, have hypoglycemia, which is adrenal issues. You're over cortisol, 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 drop your blood sugar too low, feel tired. People either feel tired after they wake up, tired um, when for breakfast, tired uh, at the end of the day, or they're exhausted, or they're tired in that postprandial uh, reactive hypoglycemic time after lunch in the afternoon. And when you do keto, it exacerbates and gets worse. So that's the reason why timing of your food, circadian rhythm, de-stressing, don't do stuff late at night, will help balance the blood sugar so you don't go into this hypoglycemia because sometimes it's so bad when people go on keto, I have to take them off and put them on low carb, high fat, which is what I do now. I also have integrated low carb, high fat into, you know, I run a keto course, but it's not just keto. It's keto, keto carnivore and low carb, high fat for all those people who've got histamine issues who do carnivore, keto onivore for people who've got autoimmunity and they don't, they can handle, you know, X amount of plants. So like if you don't have severe histamine, you can deal with things like uh, let's say cauliflower, or you can deal with, if you don't have a latex allergy to avocados, you eat that. If you, like, I don't have a latex allergy. My body loves avocados. So I can eat an avocado a day, but still ride that line of carnivore because I'm not eating any other plant source foods nor uh, 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 spices, just avocado for the potassium. Cause I don't want to take potassium citrate. Why am I going to take a supplement when I got avocados right there? So, you know, we got that whole like, but you're not really uh, carnivore. And I'm like, I don't care what you call it, but I'm good. I'm fabulous. That's what I am. All right, here we go. No, I never said me one. I, if I say eat one meal a day, I say it's stupid. This guy's like, Chad's like, but I thought you said something about eating one meal a day. I did. That is dumb. It's just anorexia. People are like, I do really well. You should see people who say I do really well. Mostly men. Okay. Mostly men and not all, not all. There are some women who say I do one meal a day and they look, they don't look healthy. I'm just saying, in my opinion, um, you are so wrong, Chad. Everybody knows who's been following me knows that all I do is slam OMAD and one meal a day and intermittent fasting. I call it anorexia. It's the new trend of anorexia. It's people obsession with weight loss. I had an interview with Mike Mutzel on his channel, which is high intensity health. And he assumed that I talk about intermittent fasting or fasting. And I was like, no, bro, I don't. You and I have more metabolic strength. These people who watch us don't have met metabolic strength or there'd be more people like me at my age at 52 being in this type of health, okay? And the reason why I sports, wear sports bras is because I, you can see in a video, there is no face body tuning. I can't lie. What you see is who I am live. We're live. So there is no editing on how I look. This is it. Only commenting about the lights. What are they saying? <laughs> no, no, no. 
I mean, you're not complaining about how you uh, you look or you don't. Oh, say I'm that. only complaining about lights. <laughs> yeah, and I'm complaining about the way I look. No, I'm actually really satisfied with how I look, just because I work so hard to be put myself in optimal health. That's the reason why I don't talk a lot about um, my body image. And a lot of women say, well, you know, like this woman on my Instagram. Oh, child, mm. now I'm blocking everything. Yeah, because we need to see your body. You're talking about your body now. <laughs> okay, there's my body. Yeah. There's my body, right? There it is. But whew, there's my body with the stomach out. There's my body with the stomach in. Um, somebody said, oh, you always always flexing your abs. I'm like, yeah, that's how you get abs. I'm <laughs> always tightening my abs. When I'm at home, I tighten my abs. When I'm everywhere, I tighten my abs. And that's the reason why my abs have stayed pretty damn good over the years. It's like you really work in that core. Now, uh, let's see, rapid weight gain. No, no, we're up here, we're up here. Loss of menstrual cycle. Here's one thing that nobody talks about. Hmm? You wanna do one meal a day? You want women, you wanna lose your menstrual cycle and start going through menopause early? Do that if you're still bleeding, okay? Do that because you're gonna lose your menstrual cycle. You wanna sit there and do, uh, you know, carnivore high protein? Not enough fat? Do men talk about the loss of menstrual cycle? Why would they do that? Because they don't freaking know. Oh, it just irritates me. Nobody talks about this crap. And then you get these dumb women who sit there and try to say, and they're not like dumb people. They just say dumb things. Um, they're dumb in that context. I said something to my mom the other day. I was like, that was a dumb thing that you said. She's like, I'm not dumb. I'm like, mom, I didn't call you dumb. That was a dumb thing you said, wasn't it? Anyway... <laughs> It means without thought, like really ridiculousness. So menstrual cycle, you can lose it when you don't have enough fat on these low carb, high fat or carnivore dietary measures, period. Get your fat's up, 200, higher, boom, animal fat. Prolonged bleeding is another issue. They may not lose the cycle, but all of a sudden you're bleeding more than friggin', you know, or the, the menstrual cycle, cycle itself is shortening and you're having it every 12 days. That's too short. Or women start to just bleed a lot. Do these men talk about this? No. Why don't they? Because they don't know. They sit and give you, you know, guidelines to do these dietary measures and leave out like a lot of stuff that's really, really important. Uh, let me see here. We've got um, loss of libido. Loss of libido. And this comes from a thing called pregnenolone steel and a, too much cortisol. So, pregnenolone steel is this concept where you have high levels of cortisol because cortisol is the, from the adrenals and it should only really be used when you're doing something really that takes a lot of physical energy or fight or flight, trying to run from danger, but or when you're waking up in the morning. Other than that, if you got sustained high levels of cortisol being released from the adrenals, guess what? That's gonna rob from your sex hormone tree. So why is everybody going running and taking DHEA supplements? You need to address your cortisol first. Supplements aren't the first answer. They're like fifth on the list. Go towards the reason why your cortisol is high because pregnenolone, pregnenolone uh, our cortisol is going to rob pregnenolone, DHEA, and all the way down to three estrogens, progesterone, and your testosterone. Uh, let's see here. Uh, start of hot flashes or increase of it. So I've seen women start hot flashing on keto because they have low glycogen storages, which is energy in the muscle uh, from glucose, and they don't use enough ketones, and the body's like stressed out because they don't sleep. They go 100 miles an hour. They have three, women have three days in one. They go, 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 go. They're at an energy deficit because they're using coffee or they're using their adrenal glands to get through the day. And if you're menopausal, boom, you start having flashes or they increase. So hot flashes also due to magnesium deficiency, the electrolytes, which I'm gonna do another stream on electrolytes. So pay attention to that. Those women who's, uh, uh, their, uh, my hands straight, their um, hot flashes increase due to lack of magnesium and electrolyte balance. Loss of libido in men. I see this a lot in men because they are not getting enough cholesterol in their diet. Yes, cholesterol is a precursor to all your sex hormones. Point blank, period. Nobody can argue that. Done. You don't eat enough fat. You're just, you're just eating the fat on the cut of meat you're eating. That's not enough fat. That's not enough fat. 
sorry, that is not enough fat because the amount of fat that you need to get to get over 200 grams, you can't stuff yourself with more protein. Protein is going to go into a thing called gluconeogenesis because your body can only break it down so fast. It can only like eat, chew, digest. There's a lot of y'all don't chew enough. You don't chew enough. Gets down to your stomach. You have hypochlorhydria. Here's the stuff people don't talk about. Hypochlorhydria. <coughs> you eat a lot of meat on a carnivore diet. You can't freaking break it down. Then you have to eat more meat to get the fat up. And now that excess glucose is going to block your keto adaptation and feel like crap. Even though you feel better, same thing as veganism, you cut out all the junk, you cut out all the standard American diet, feel better, but over the long term, because my freaking brown booty, okay, my round booty, I'm proud of my booty, my round booty has been doing this for 12 years, and I can tell you what the problem is. These people have been doing it like one or two years and refeeding on carbs, and then they're their authority? Oh, uh, hell to the nah. Okay, here we go. Down, let me see, hot flashes, loss of, okay, uh, libido in men. So I see men's testosterone drop on keto, doing it wrong, eating almond flour and keto pizza, right, the Greek guy, and making excuses for not doing what you're supposed to do. Now, let's see here, loss of leg. So you start to see guys' leg muscles go down. That's gluconeogenesis. Men like to take it from a men's body of breaking down amino, uh, the proteins in the legs. From gluconeogenesis, the adrenal response is in the legs. For women, it's in the arms. So women get these these freaking T-Rex arms and big, huge estimate estrogen dominant thighs and butt and everything and cellulite. And men lose their little, get little skinny legs, but they got like muscle cuts in the shoulders so they can mask it with big floppy, you know, cargo pants. Now, <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, let's see. Loss of size in men. So the legs increase in belly fat. So how you know? People are like, oh, I lost 60 pounds doing keto. Yeah, but your legs are this big now, and you got like this back fat you didn't have before. What's up with that, bruh? Now, so the weight is very subjective. Scales are just ridiculous. Back fat. Now, rapid weight gain. People have a wap, rapid, wap it? <laughs> Waja wap it. Baba wawa. Okay, <laughs> people have a, ra a rapid weight gain due to the fact that they never stabilize their blood sugar, they never change their lifestyle, they just ate ketogenic foods, which was a bunch of keto food porn, and then, did I say food porn? Food, dirty keto. And then um, people, um, they don't, their macros are totally wrong, they're eating the wrong foods, and then their blood sugar was never stabilized, they never tried to get their stress down. Now you've got a bunch of glucose, right? Because my client today, and I could show you, but I don't want to like, he should give his personal information. He's like, my blood sugar is 107. I'm like, okay, you're going through gluconeogenesis. Welcome to that club of that you can have diabetic high numbers on a ketogenic diet. So y'all, people who are fasting, let me tell you right now, your insulin might've dropped and your ketones might've risen. You keep fasting, watch it flip. And I've seen that with every freaking client who does it for on a sustained level without refeeding. Because the only thing that's gonna stabilize that blood sugar uh, if you try to do sustained fasting is to eat carbs again or try to go and eat a bunch of fat. Oddly enough, right? For people who've got metabolic strength. Now, because what you've got is like insulin is going to take, so you've got, so fat doesn't make you fat. It makes you fat if you've got a bunch of blood sugar in your blood through gluconeogenesis from stress and the adrenals. And if your blood sugar's, where am I sitting? Ooh, over here. If my blood sugar's really, really high at 107 and I just ate a bunch of fat, now all that insulin can take the blood sugar and the fat and store it. If my blood glucose, this is why we want to be insulin sensitive, which means that you only need a little insulin to do a big job. But if you have a lot of insulin, it's going to take everything in the blood and store it, store it as fat. So if my insulin is low and uh, I'm doing a ketogenic diet with a lot of fat, I don't get fat, you guys. I eat a ton of fat all day long and I don't get fat because my insulin is low, very low, which means my estrogen and my testosterone, like, thank you, Stephanie, we can still build muscle in your 50s and not go through menopause. Kill it. All right, here we go. I see, rapid weight gain due to blood sugar spikes, yes. Because blood sugar is trying to, blood sugar is trying to get itself, like, it's like, where, where are my carbs? And your body can make blood sugar without eating a drop of carbs through gluconeogenesis, which is the breakdown amino acids converted into blood sugar, which is why I don't eat too much protein because that excess protein can block your keto adaptation. And people are like, oh my God, Stephanie, you're so right. I got my glucometer, my protein spikes every time I eat too much protein. Now, and the, pro, the protein amounts are dependent on your age, your height, your weight, your lean mass, your exercise, your, your gut, freaking hypo, your stomach, hydro, not hypo. Uh, your uh, hydrochloric acid in your stomach, then you know how you can break down if you have protease and all these enzymes to break down uh, pepsin, 
peptides. <laughs> Insulin resistance rebound, which I already spoke about blood sugar and fat, which I talked about estrogen dominance. This is a problem, okay, in men too. This can come from the diet, from xenoestrogens. It can come from coming from the world of soda and coffee and plastic bottles and soy things and anything that will raise your estrogen. And non-organic foods can raise your estrogen. Now, you want to stay fat if your estrogen is running high. You must address your hormones and the adrenals and your ovaries and if, if they still work and your gonads if they still work while doing a ketogenic product product <laughs> ketogenic lifestyle you have to, it's a whole lifestyle it's not just a diet uh, insulin resistance is another problem if you come into keto most of you guys are insulin resistant don't know until you get a glucometer and you're like oh it's just my blood sugar it's always over 100 i'm like it was always like that you just didn't know it that's the reason why you couldn't get lean right doesn't matter the age and that just the age alone do you have any more? Oh, I can't believe yeah. I wrote this. I'm like tired of the list I wrote we now. We have this and this. Okay, now I'm just gonna go through this. Electrolyte deficiency, which is already spoke about, muscle cramps, heart palps, eye it, uh, twitching, tired. These are all magnesium, potassium, sodium, and water. Hunger, a decrease in hunger, it's because your body, the, um, the gallbladder has to sit and break down the fat. Anything where the body has to use extra equipment to break down food is gonna decrease your Hunger, an increase of hunger is leaky gut because you're not absorbing the fat, not making ketones, and it's a frack of a mess. Uh, binging at night, a lot of people do that, not hungry in the morning. That's also because people have typically have low stomach acid. They don't digest their food as slowly or they're eating too late and they're not hungry in the morning, which is a yeah. problem because this has a problem with your adrenal insufficiency. You're not hungry in the morning. Okay, we're going to keep going. I'm going to talk this fast. We'll get through this list. I talk fast. He doesn't Jesus. know how to. He mansplains, Greek mansplains everything too long. Now we've got the gallbladder, which I always talked about. Let's go to the next one. Keto breath. Oh yeah. Keto breath is another symptom. These are ketones. People said, am I not adapted because I'm ketones? If it's chronic all the time, yes, it's a symptom of not using ketones. But if you have a keto breath for like a couple weeks, then it's no problem. And for the keto breath, you use oregano oil and coconut oil, oil pool and swish and spit it out and get rid of that nastiness out of your breath because it's stinking. All right, now we've got gallbladder, right, by, right side pain, uh, bloated, nausea is gallbladder, nausea pressure in the stomach, pressure on the side, everything's on the right side of the gallbladder. Now, please don't have your gallbladder removed. Go get an ultrasound. If you have stones, if you only have a few stones, if you've got under 10 stones, you can save it. You get up into the 20 stones and it's infected, they have to remove it. But most women just have sludge and the, the stupid doctors just rip out organs. Oh, we don't need your uterus. Oh, we don't need your gallbladder. You don't need it, let's just take it out, dumb idiots. All right, now, um, Thyroid symptoms, hair falling out, rapid weight gain, uh, that's another rapid weight gain, dry skin, dry hair, nails, uh, muscle ache, feeling cold, cold hands and cold feet, and also Raynaud's disorder where the ringing of fingertips, I didn't, I didn't write that down. This is due to high cortisol, crappy sleep, adrenal insufficiency, sleeping meal, uh, sleepy skipping meals, eating a bunch of carbs, um, uh, stress, poor sleep, not having a straight C spine where you have a lot of estrogen that gets caught in the biliary system and then that creates a thyroid problem. Having a weak gut wall which is not absorbing vitamin D, selenium, zinc, uh, iodine. Um, these are all important vitamins and mer minerals for your thyroid function. I did a thyroid live stream. Go back to the catalog. I'll put things in playlist so you can see it and find it. Sleep issues. People can't sleep more than normal on, on, uh, on uh, like I mentioned that as one of the top uh, waking up often in the middle of the night. Sometimes you eat a lot of fat. The 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 uh, the the, um, the gallbladder is starting to release bile and it's sludgy, and so you're having this delayed reaction of bile release. And you're like, Ugh. you wake up, you're like, Ugh. Um, hypoglycemia will wake you up in the middle of the night because you're not eating enough fat and you're eating a bunch of protein, and protein converts to glucose, but you're not restoring your glycogen storages. And you wake up in the middle of the na night with a lot of cortisol, which makes you feel nauseated and feel like a jittery and awake and anxious. And all that anxiety can happen when you're hypoglycemic. Increased need for napping, that's because if you're not using ketones and your glycogen storages are low because you're not eating carbs. Crazy dreams, that's vivid, that's from adrenal, like your adrenal glands are overworked because you're not eating enough fat and da da da, and timing your food and circadian rhythm, not going to sleep on time, eating the wrong ketogenic foods, and boom, you have crazy dreams. That's not good, that is a lot of cortisol loss of uh, or loss of dreaming you can't dream at all because you're not going down into REM you're not going to the five levels of sleep you're not hitting deep sleep and I'm done with this list let's answer the questions <laughs> good lord I'm not done yes I am yes yes you're done my dear can you guys believe I went through that uh, list I can't 
we can keep that graphic up for a second. Let's get through the um, comments and questions. Uh, okay, let's go. We've got so, 60 whole people in my live stream and I've got almost 100,000 subscribers. Thank you, YouTube. I guess I keep hearing from other people that this is happening to them as well. It's pretty devastating to work this hard and people aren't getting their notifications at all. Wow, impressive. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, oh, you said that. Hey, Deborah, what do you think about MoveMat? Never heard of it. Uh, hey, Jessica, say hello. Are you? Oh, keep going, keep going. Let's get to the question. I yeah. uh, watched it. Love. Oh, he watched. She watched the roundtable talk with Bart Kids Channel. I'm new to this channel. She's really 52. Oh, okay, I read that. How are you feeling, Stephanie? In a rush? That's what I'm feeling right now, but I want to get through it all. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Deborah saying hello, my mod. Yes, she does. Likes. Like up the stream. Yeah, like up the stream, you guys. What? There's 60 people. We are watching. Only 35 likes. I don't check to see who likes. So if you like it, maybe some people will come join this freaking chat and see all the work that I put into to put the full list that other people aren't doing who got their PhDs and all this stuff. Uh, I like symptoms of the keto flu every time I... Uh, I eat too many carbs. Yes, that too. You can have that too. Keto symptoms from eating too many carbs because your uh, blood sugar can shoot up and drop and make you feel like crap. How do you get potassium on carnivore? I made that with red meat or potassium citrate. I gave up coffee three weeks ago and, and taking adrenal and taking adrenals by ancestral supplements. Okay, there. Okay, because that's where are we? There we go. There we go. That's ancestral. That is the only sponsor I have. I've got, I've had 200 people contact me or more over the years and I'm like, nope, nope, nope. They do uh, supplements from head, brain to the booty, like all the way down, not just liver and not just kidney. They do brain, they do spleen, they do thymus, they do trachea, they do thyroid, they do lungs, they do heart, they do testicles, they do freaking tallow, they do, I mean, who does that? And they get, they're getting their um, grass fed, um, um, they're getting their grass fed, uh, la, 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 ruminants, their, um, livestock from New Zealand, which has very strict regulations on even the glyphosate and the pesticides and no corn grass fed. Fantabulous. All right. I wish Joe Wiggum would extend you in, a, in a, an invite. Yes. But I don't, I don't know if he knows I exist or not. <laughs> Send him an email. <laughs> no, I'm not sure you, that. not you, the the people. Yeah, maybe you could do a video one. Jessica sure. sent him an email. Oh, she did. <laughs> oh, she didn't, did she? Oh, go back. If you want to book a consultation, go to stephanieperson.com. Deborah's put it into the consultation. I mean the comment section so you can see the spelling. If you want me to not talk slow and be very loving and tender to you guys and give you a strong strategy. Uh, and I also do a keto course, same thing, stephanieperson.com. It's only $15 a month, which is good. All this research I do, I do triple the amount on that course page. Let me see what symptoms, if you have kidney stones, uh, pain. So this pain, you might have, no, it's pain. It's pretty much pain. I mean, kidneys are irritated. If you're dehydrated, you're going to get pain or you're going to have like dark urine. What's, uh, let me see over there. Her consultations are amazing. Thank you, Deborah. Um, yes, I do customize everything the whole day. It's not just the plan. It's your workout, your lifestyle, your this, the that, blah, 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 sleep strategies, you name it. Poop strategies, gut strategies, histamine strategies, autoimmune strategies, you name it. Uh, sex hormone, menstrual cycle, infertility, fertility, all those issues. Stephanie, what's the best food for prostate? Um, probably not, uh, probably not, um, colostrum. Um, I, I, I think that balancing your blood sugar and becoming ketotic, my way of doing it, which is very strict and circadian rhythm and eating on a schedule and eating to your stomach acid and adrenal insufficiency and blood sugar, that's the way. So like if we did a consultation, I'd map it all out and then we could do a follow-up. So boom, uh, can any, can, can any, any of this help gallstones break down? Uh, it can stop the estrogen dominance and stop the production of stones, but then to break them down, you need citrate, Cit citrus. You could do lemon. You can do apple. No, no, no lemon. It's lemon, lime, and magnesium citrate. Those are the main ones. Break down the stones. There's something else. I have a gallbladder strategy. I wrote a whole thing on it for the course page. I gotta find that because I can't remember. There's like two more things. Uh, high cl high cortisol also results in poor working gluconeogenesis when, when fasting and zero carb. Yes, people need basically you're breaking down muscle to raise your blood sugar and it messes with your immune function. People need to stop calling keto restrictive and call it efficient. Thank you, Chad. That was bomb. Boof. 
That was awesome. Uh, C7 is doing better now. Bell Nightcrews, I read all that earlier. Keep going. I am so behind. Let's keep going. You can recommend a brand of Oxfile. I don't. Just go on Amazon, do the reviews. Keep going. I don't like to recommend brands. Uh, see, I don't want to think I'm in ketosis. Sure, I want to know keto yet. I'm taking it slow. Okay. Uh, but I'll help you, Janine. We, we will talk. Go down. I think I already read that. Yes, it's been when May gave. No, no, you're going too fast. Go down. I already see Janine's things. No, go back to the top of the page. There, there, slow. I'm sorry to mean to sound like that. No, don't do that. Oh my God. Yes, I hate when men give me advice, diet advice. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, hi, finally caught you live. Read that. Slow carbs. They talk about iron overload. Yes. Hi, me too. Finally caught you live. Yay. You're a ro on a roll tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Avocado. Avocado. Jessica says, I, I showed my father read that. Okay. Keep carbs with high fibers. Suppose what? No. Yeah. I don't know. Will keto adapt while consuming seven grams of carbs? Nope. Read that. That's no big time. My son thought things of you were twenties. Thank you. Twenties. Oh my God. Let me see here. What do you see? What do you do when you have low folate and uh, low, uh, you have DMT and it can sometimes be dangerous. Uh, makeup, I need more. Do you, are you tested for the double G, G mutation MTHFR? Is that why you have low folate? Don't know. Need more context before I give advice. Uh, do you have any special recommendations for better mitochondria function? Keto diet? Keto omnivore car carnivore? The lifestyle things, the diet part, check. The lifestyle is low functioning mitochondria means too high cortisol. So that can come in the form of not exercising, exercising too much, stress, not being able to diaphragmatic breathe, meditate, get away from any EMF poisoning. So that's a whole laundry list. That's a, that's a whole another conversation. Uh, Janine says, had loose stool, thought I, I was because of no fiber. No, uh, no, 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 it's not because of fiber. No, definitely not because of the fiber. Most people eat processed food with no, most, no fiber in it anyway. I get loose stool from, but it could be, no, that's not true. I'll figure it out. We're going to figure it out. Uh, I get loose stool from high fat. That's gallbladder read that. How do you know if you've been having histamine reactions to anything that I'm eating? I have a whole live stream on histamine and it's things like bloated and itchy and irritable and tired and mucusy and sneezing and flu like symptoms and, you know, scalp itching and things on the skin and bloated and loose stool, all this kind of weird stuff. Okay. Uh, oh my God. Thank you so much for suggesting ancestral supplements. I feel so good. And my freaking keto rash went away. Yes. Yes. Cause colostrum is the bomb. Also with histamine intolerance, you can also take uh, kidney or thymus for diamine oxi doc oxidase deficiency in the small intestine that helps break down histamine. Boom. There's a stuff code. And you get a discount. You can't do it through Amazon though, because they don't make no money. Because Amazon's already taking a cut, and then they get to take a lower cut. So it's got to be through the website ancestralsupplements.com. Now, la, 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 I took me because I was like, how come you guys don't put on it? And I'm like, Amazon. They're like, look, we are like most of these animals have one organ. Like they're not producing like you know plant-based like junky supplements. So like you know it's you can't it's these are from really healthy cows so i get why their prices are high but i would not i don't recommend six capsules i recommend two because you're going to burn through it in a month and it's just they're expensive but they're freaking amazing they work it took me seven months but i finally got finally adapted yes mama three what is it maestra mm -hmm. uh let me see what what range of protein do you recommend for athletes men and women oh that oh that's, oh, that's so long Mm -hmm. Oh, it's to make it simple. It's 45 to 60, depending on if you're athletic woman size, lean mass, age, blah, stomach acid levels. Men, it's from like 60 to about 90. It depends on how big you are. Same thing. Blah. Uh, let me see. I thought, I'm sorry. It's just because so many questions, guys. I'm trying to hit everybody. I took, um, uh, where wouldn't it be if you didn't love you? Okay. Where we wouldn't be here if we didn't love your personality. Well, thank you, Parvux Love, because when people, some people try to argue with me, but Deborah, Deborah like, she puts the kibosh on it. Um, maybe I am wrong. Right on, I don't remember that was from. About just seeing, the Omad. Oh, the Omad, yeah, he's totally uh, wrong. Uh, just seeing this, now I rewatch Respect to the Keto Queen. Thank you so much, Cynthia. I uh, suppose it Thea. What about premenopause? Uh, yeah, I'll do a whole video on that. I'll talk about that from home, the whole premenopause. Pre-menopause thing. 
I'll talk about it because that's a lot. I get a lot of questions about menopause. Please, please, Stephanie, talk about premenopause. So I will. But we have men here. They don't care. They have men don't want to talk about menstrual cycles and all that kind of stuff. Let me see. Like the live stream. Yes, like, like. She liked it. Tammy, thank you. Um, hasn't fasting been shown to preserve muscle boost? No, not at all. You're not going to find any studies saying that fasting is going to, uh, uh, you know, uh, b b how's it going to make muscle? You're not eating. How's that going to make muscle? What? Because you might take away inflammatory foods, right? So the cortisol goes down and maybe you are not in the beginning. You try to fast over periods of time, you're going to lose muscle. That's point blank period done. Usually they take, uh, they eat the brain, they break down the brain and they may build muscle that way. So you have all these big people. You're not on people. camera. You just I know. Like, hear this Greek <laughs> accent. <laughs> yeah, he's right. They're breaking down the brain. Yeah, you break down the brain and then you have all these uh, brainless muscle guys in the gym. <laughs> it's kind of true because all of this, those, the, that's the whole autophagy thing. No, there's no proof of that. Absolutely <laughs> fasting. How can you build muscle if you're not eating? You either need glycogen storages or you need ketones. How are you going to build muscle? If you have the answer, I'd really love to learn as sarcastic as that sound. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, Kieran's Fitness is a great channel. Thank you. Deborah is reminding you to book a consultation. Etni says, hi, Stephanie. What do you think about GAPS diet to heal the gut? Carnivore is better than GAPS. It gets rid of all the crap. Like just GAPS is old school. Keto carnivore is new. You want to really do it? Keto carnivore. Uh, can we use FaceTime to do the? Yes, you can do FaceTime, Lori. Done. FaceTime, Zoom, for again, Google Hangouts, a Facebook live video, Skype is the main one I use. Uh, yeah, FaceTime, easy. Uh, I wish I had done my consultation. Wish what I... happened? Wait, I... it jumped a little bit. Excuse me. Uh, oh. I mean, we're, 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 keep going. I really don't yeah. know. We did Skype for mine. Oh, she's talking about lag. That did cool. Uh, Love that when there's an announcement on the live chat. Yay, Lori. Um, I did get a notification. I just happened to get it on YouTube. I, I just happened to, oh, she just got it. Or that person did. I need you as a coach. Yes, I'm a good coach. I'm really hyper in the live stream, but I'm way more calm and way more my age. When we, you and we, you, when you and I talk, it's gonna be me and you guys, me and you. Okay, uh, I have to do the MTH uh, FR gene, yeah. I think so. Uh, makeup addict 25. Um, I feel shortness of breath. Ooh, I'm, it sounds like a uh, benign heart palps, headache in the back of the head. Regular. Okay, sounds like either. It sounds like you don't have. Get on your electrolyte lights. Uh, makeup art, um, addict, addict has been following me for so long and still has not booked a consultation. Girl, I created two tennis child. I created different like price. Uh, uh, levels of consultations or there's a course. I even have a $15 a month made a make a bag. You know, you can go on for one month through on the course page to ask some of these questions. Cause it's just hard to do in a live stream. Uh, yes. To subscribe to my keto course, go to stephaniepersonal.com. My Instagram is stephanie ketogenic and all this stuff is everywhere. As you can see, wait, where is it? To your right. Here's my Instagram. This is the Facebook that's free content with Stephanie business person. All right, um, and ancestral there, uh, and the co coaching stuff there. But you can't read it. Everybody's complaining they can't read it later because too small. Um, we should like take me away and you, could, you know put it really big so people can do the screenshot. But it's in the show notes too. Uh, is that it? I'm 47. How can I get like you? I weigh 270 pounds. Uh, I don't know if you're a man or a woman. So oh, miss, that's a woman. Okay, that's a long story. I hate to be like a salesman, but like. Consultation is the best way, to be honest, because if you're 270 and a woman, there's a lot of insulin resistance, there's a lot of estrogen dominance, there's a lot of stress, poor sleep. This is a fact. Done. Is that it? Yep. Oh, Good, because my ass is tired. <laughs> Did they not see the sign outside the door? I'm just uh, saying. I know. Like, what the heck? Anyway. Okay. Um, it's 5.43. Mm-hmm. I think that's it. Yeah. Because what I tend to do is I wish I would have caught everybody's questions live and I could hide them, but I'm still going to be behind on the comments. It's not possible. Like you have to speak to 
talk, talk about the theme of the topic of the and then answer the questions i know but people who watch the replay there's more people who watch the replay that are in the stream i've got mm -hmm. 48 whole people here it's 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 sad not you guys but the fact that people aren't getting their notifications to watch me go live because i used to have hundreds in my live streams no not anymore it's scaring the crap out of me literally um And uh, so when people watch the replay, the numbers go up and then they're freaking out that I'm talking to the chat. That's the problem. Mm. Anyway. Uh, thank you, Deborah. Thank you, Keisha. Thank you, everyone who did it. And Lori, who I see often in the live stream and all the new people that came. Make sure that your YouTube channels are uh, hit to take notifications. So when I go live, I can actually try to talk to you like makeup addict. I've really talked to this person a few times. Like she says, I got shortness of breath. Could be her, it could be potassium deficiency. I don't know her age, so it could be an iron deficiency. And uh, headaches sounds like low water, low sodium, magnesium, potassium. Sounds like she's low in all of that. Um, and, but she has, a, the doctor can't figure it out. Ed figured it out. I don't think it's just a due mutation. I'm pretty sure that Makeup Addict 26 is doing a lot of things wrong. The doctors are too dumb to ask the personal questions because they try to stick 80 people in one day. That means seven people, seven minutes per client, 80, 50 to 80 people that try to get clients all day long. That's seven minutes. So you talk to a doctor, they're not going to know anything about you. It's embarrassing that they don't know. See, so thank you for all the great information. Can't wait for the book and the cons book of consultation. Stephanie, you have the same name. Awesome. There's not a lot of Stephanie's out there. I'm so happy, but yes, that's awesome. Got a great name. Uh, Half Moon Bay says, hello, Stephanie. Hi, Half Moon Bay. Uh, Smashly Evans, thank you, Steph. Lori says, a bunch of hearts, which I say all the time. And Half Moon Bay just logged in. Can you believe it, Half Moon Bay? People are not getting their notifications because if they did, we'd have more of a discussion but it's kind of hard to be doing a live stream with just a few people in the house i wanted to hit that huge list that i created y'all know i work really hard on all these live streams i really really work hard and i don't just like read a study and then talk about it i talk about real people with real lives and real results or lack mm. of results terry parks has a nice question is keto safe for liver issues alpha t anti trypsin deficiency Uh, yeah, I think so. I think with, um, it's not that keto is dangerous, not that keto is dangerous for the liver. That's not the, pr the problem. It's low liver function being able to make ketones. So often I have people sort of uh, do a low carb, high fat. Since you have this deficiency or alpha T anti trypsin deficiency that you have this deficiency, I would walk you slowly into ketosis to where it wouldn't be too difficult for your, your liver to do all the work that it needs to do to create the ketones. It's not the fat that damaged the liver, it's the need to convert uh, fats, fatty acids into ketones. I swear I need you, aw, miss workout, working, working it out. I like that, I, mean, I like your name. <sighs> all right guys, um, I think you know what you should do? We should do quick, two quick live streams. So I can answer some of these questions more in depth uh, and I can link them into the, uh, mm -hmm. the next couple days. That's what we do to try to get, you know, because I'm, I'm only coming here. Sometimes I come twice a week to the studio, but now it's once a week. When is your book going to release? Oh, somebody got pissed because my, okay, let me tell you guys right now. Okay. I need to do, I think I'm going to do a video about that. Why my book never came out. Excuse me, I'm burping. So I had a book, book publishing deal. I tore up the contract. I didn't want to the book to come out and I don't really want to go into it, but I wasn't really feeling some of the things that they were super sweet to me. That's not the issue. I didn't like some of the things that the book publishing company were doing and they were really in a rush to put out books and the quality of what was being put out, I felt found to be very dangerous. You guys know that I'm about preserving people's health. And so if you look at You know, the amount, the contract that you sign, like the amount of work that gets involved, you have to promote it yourself. The percentages per, per, per book were that much. And then you have to pay for editing. You have to pay for any of the artwork and then you don't make any money. So I decided, plus a bunch of stuff was going off. So I decided I'm going to self publish, but instead of talking about, oh, my book's going to come out this time, shut my mouth. It's, it's pretty much written. And because I did carnivore for almost a year, I've got that data now. I've got a lot of data that I can put in this book that I couldn't put out three years ago when I got the deal. And if I had put that book out with the pressures that they wanted me, they first signed, they wanted me to do six months. I was like, 
when you're a new author, you don't know anything about this stuff. I'll do a video on it, but uh, I was like, they just wanted it out. They wanted to hit the keto wave and they were right in that context. If my book had come out right before the keto explosion, I'd be making more money, not the money that I should be making off the book, but I'd be making a lot more money. And I was like, no, now that I, my book didn't come out, I don't have to look back at a book that I'm not proud of. So the book will come out. Trust me, it will come out and I will announce it and it is done, but it has to be edited. It has to be photographed and a lot of work has to be really put into it. And I've got to cross my eyes and di dot my T's one more time to make sure that the content that goes in becomes the ultimate guide thus far. That's why. Uh, see, her consultations are really, really are great. She digs deep into your particular health issues and creates a great plan for you. Thank you, thank you. Yes, very, very, very true. So think about that, guys. Now I'm out. Do you have any last words, mm. Mr. Uh, Greek, mm. Greek guy? Where am I? Yeah, am I? Hi. Uh, no, keep doing keto. Keep trying, keep working it out, and listen to Stephanie. Thank you. Yeah. I also had, uh, have some experience, experiments to do, and we will have about uh, how useful are the uh, keto products that we hear, and whether they up your ketones, and whether you can use the ketones that you're getting. Anyway, that's my experiment. You will have it. He did the keto esters and I was like, dude, why'd you do that? But anyway, he's going to do it and I think it'll be good for me to put, he's going to put it and I'll put, we'll put it together. No. Uh, makeup addict, it could be limes. Who knows? I mean, you, it looks, sounds like you might have a false positive reading on your, uh, on your blood test for limes, but it doesn't even matter. I deal with a lot of people who've got limes. They can fully keto adapt and get rid of all those symptoms doing keto or keto carnivore the right way. Done. So, um, because you know so much already, your book will still, uh, sell great. I don't care about, to be honest. As you can see, I'm not a millionaire. I told Dr. Berg in a conversation, I'm a horrible businesswoman. You're a great businessman. I told him that. I'm horrible because I literally don't want to put out anything that could potentially harm anyone. So I am not de in desperate to get a book out because it's going to sell a lot, clearly. I want to put out a book that 20 years from now I'm going to be like, that was my baby. I really took my time to put it out. Even though I missed the keto wave of making money on it because now that keto is like, you know, uh, losing its hype on the trend. Like every, a lot of people do it and they know about it, but it doesn't have the same type of beauty that it did 10 years ago when I started talking about it on the internet. And on that note, it's time to go. <laughs> okay. So, bye guys. Bye guys.